name of Jesus Christ, our loving and risen Savior, dear friends. For many, many years, manufacturers have been trying to sell more of their products by adding a word to the announcements and advertisements for their ads. And that word is new. It's often followed by the words and improved. I guess their thinking is, if you liked their product before, you're really going to like it now and buy more of it. Or if you didn't like it before or had never tried it, now you're going to be enticed to try it again. However, I think most of us over the years have, have kind of learned to be a little bit skeptical when we hear the words new and improved attached to a, a product. Oftentimes it seems like the only thing new about products that say that is the packaging is new and the price is new. And as far as the improved part, just consider what happened to a couple of very well-known beverage companies a few decades back when they tried to improve their product. Back in the early 70s, Schlitz Brewing Company, which was at the time the second largest brewer in the world, decided they would improve their flagship beer and immediately the customers rejected it, they hated it, and within 10 years, Schlitz was out of business. In 1985, Coca-Cola tried something similar. They changed the formula of their classic Coke. They improved it, but once again, the consumers hated it. They learned a lesson from Schlitz, though. They didn't stick with it very long. They immediately switched back to the old one before they went out of business, too. So when we hear this morning our Savior Jesus say to us, a new command I give you, love one another. Maybe we're a little bit confused by that word new. Maybe we're even a little bit skeptical about it. I mean, what's so new about love? And why would it need to be improved? I mean, love has been around since God created Eve and brought her to Adam. What is with this new command our Savior Jesus gives to us? Well, this morning, this fifth Sunday of Easter, let's consider just what is so new about love? Jesus says to us this morning, a new command I give you that you love one another, but what makes it new and improved is what he said right after that. He said, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. That's what's new. That's what's improved about love. It's not our love, it's his love for us that is new and different and better. So what is it that's new and different and better and improved of Jesus' love over our love? Well, let's start with, first of all, whom he loves and why he loves. For most of us, love is a, a, a reciprocal thing. We love others who love us back. When that doesn't happen, love doesn't last. I mean, maybe you've found yourself in a situation where you are loving somebody who doesn't show love back to you, but that's got to change. Either that person is going to start loving you or you're going to stop loving that person. Love also, for most people, seems to be something that is uncontrollable. It's all out of our, our control. It just happens. You know, like, like we say, we fell in love. We fall in love. Well, think about that. When you're falling... You're not in control, are you? Gravity's in control. You're just along for the ride. That's how people look at love. It just happened. And they look at it the opposite, too. You fall out of love. And that just happens, too, completely out of our control. And then we look at Jesus' love. We look at whom he loves and why he loves. He loves us. That's not reciprocal. He didn't wait for us to make the first move. He doesn't love us because we are so loving toward him. You know, just think of back in Eden 
when sin first entered the world. You know, the dust hadn't even settled on the, on, the, uh, on the scene when Adam and Eve had rebelled against their creator. And what did God do? He didn't sit there waiting for them to make the first move. And that's a very good thing because he would have been waiting a long, long time. He didn't wait for Adam and Eve to, to come forward and confess what they had done and ask his forgiveness. He sought them out even as they were trying to hide from him. Even as they rebelled against him, he promised a Savior. We love because he first loved us. St. John wrote those words in his letter, his first letter. Christ's love is not something that happens to him, that he has no control over. Christ has complete control over his love. It is a matter of his will. He wills to love us. It is his good and gracious will to love sinners like you and me. In our reading this morning, Jesus began that section by saying that now is the Son of Man glorified. And God is glorified in him. This is what's so glorious about his love. It is his good and gracious will that causes him to love, not just a feeling that flooded over him. Something else that is different, something new and improved about Christ's love compared to ours when, when we think of love, we often think of it as a, a, a feeling, an emotion. You know, whether it's the, the butterflies in the stomach kind of, kind of feeling that, that uh, maybe a, a, a boy and a girl or a man and a woman have when they first start dating each other, or maybe even the, the patriotic attitude that we have when we talk about loving our country, but, but it just seems like love for, for many people, at least the first thing we think of, is, is a feeling, an emotion. How different is Christ's love for us? You know, I, I'm quite sure Jesus did not have butterflies in his stomach when he talked about loving in our words this morning in our gospel. You know, he spoke them hours before his arrest and crucifixion. He knew what was lying ahead. He knew the, the whip and the thorns and the nail and the spear and the hell of being separated from his father was waiting for him. Hardly butterflies in the stomach kind of love. No, Jesus' love is not a, a feeling and mere emotion. It is an action-oriented love. His love is defined not by how he feels about us, but what he did for us and what he does for us. Which brings us to another point that shows us just how new and improved, how different Christ's love is for us. You know, again, when you hear those words in an advertisement, new and improved, we're, I think, automatically a little bit skeptical because very often not really very much has changed, or if it has, it hasn't changed for the good. But look at the changes that Christ's love works in us. Because he loved us with the kind of love that sought us out, didn't wait for us to seek him out. Because he loved us with something that was far more than just feelings, but was actions. Because he loved us unconditionally and sacrificially, Everything is new. Everything is changed for us and changed for the better. It means now our relationship, that broken relationship we had with our Creator is restored. It's healed. It means we're set free, free from the burden of guilt and the fear of punishment and death. Christ's love for us changes everything. It makes everything new for us. Christ, our risen Savior, wants us to know his love, his new and improved, his better, his perfect love. But he wants us to do more than just that. Christ, our risen Savior, now calls on us to love each other. 
to love each other the same way he loves us. He says, a new command I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Christ calls on us and compels us with his love and empowers us with his love to now love each other with a love that goes way beyond simply waiting for others to be nice and loving toward us, with a love that goes way beyond simply how I feel about others, but with a love that wills itself, with a love that takes action of love and forgiveness regardless of how much we think others deserve it or are worthy of it. Christ's love changes us and compels us to love each other with his kind of love. Think of how that would change things in our lives, in our world, if we do that. Think of in a marriage if a husband and wife would love each other with Christ's kind of love, that is a love that is an act of the will rather than simply a, I got no control over it, I fell in love and I fell out of love kind of love. Imagine how many more marriages would last a lifetime as God intended them to. Or imagine the change in a family between parents and children if we love each other not merely as a reaction to how somebody is acting at the moment, but rather a, a love that seeks out those who maybe aren't acting all that loving toward us at the time, but forgives unconditionally. Imagine the, the peace and the harmony in a family. Or imagine the peace and harmony in our world and in our society if we love one another as Christ loved us. You know, the rifts and the splits and the divisions that we all are so keenly aware of in our society. So much of that happens because we don't love as Christ loved us. But empowered by His Holy Spirit and compelled by His love, imagine the cold hearts that would be warmed and receptive to the word of Christ's forgiveness if we would reach out and love and forgive even those who don't love us. A new command, Jesus says. A new command I give you. Love one another. Christ's love really is new. His love his mercies, his blessings are new every single morning. Christ's love really is improved. It is so improved over our weak attempts at loving each other. Christ's love is a perfect love. A love that seeks us out. A love that wills his mercy. A love that forgives. A love that sacrifices for us. And now he says to us, love one another as I have loved you. But let's be real. We can't, can we? Not the way Jesus did. Our love for each other will always fall short. We can't love perfectly those who don't love us. We can't forgive perfectly as we are perfectly forgiven. But don't let that stop you from trying every day, even as he loves you every day with his new and improved love. Amen.